Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to talk about the, the horror of 2018 finale. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. A girl tries to get out of a box with cockroaches crawling all over her. She hears a girl's voice introducing the show, where tonight the line between pleasure and pain will be revealed, and asks the guests to be seated. When she tries to move the piece of metal she is knocked out, she is grabbed by the arm, then closed in again. Benjamin, driving Agnes to work at a gas station outside the city, while listening to the news about the soccer final on the radio. Tonight, everyone will be sitting in front of their television sets, because Denmark has reached the final. Agnes is working the night shift tonight, so she's going to lock herself in the pantry and finish her dessert for the university. At the gas station, Benjamin inflates the wheel with a pump and asks Agnes to bring it in, which she does. Agnes walks into the gas station where Belinda greets her. Agnes says that this is her last shift because her father asked her to. Belinda asks her to fix the jammed door to the car wash, and she herself is already outside texting her boyfriend, telling him that it's duty with the boss's daughter today. Agnes having already fixed the door at this time. In the building, Belinda says that it would be okay to close tonight, because no one will come, the finale after all. She declares that this will be the most boring shift and makes a bet with Agnes that if there are more than three customers, Belinda will owe her ice cream. Night falls and Belinda is still texting with her boyfriend, but notices in the window that the pump is standing at the gas pumps. She goes outside and puts it back, and when she comes back inside she argues with her boyfriend on the phone and Agnes hears it. Belinda bursts into the pantry and tells her that her own mother is kicking her out of the house because she's dating Kenny and now she has nowhere to go. They hear someone come in, Agnes asks her to sit, while she goes to the cash register. She serves a strange customer who keeps calling her by her first name. He inquires about the score of the final, but Agnes replies that she does not watch soccer. Then he is surprised and pulls the gas can into the living trailer. The movements say goodbye to Agnes. Kenny texted Belinda that he was on his way over, so she needed the key to the bathroom to clean herself up. An SUV arrives. One of the guys films everything on camera. When they go inside, the cameraman makes Agnes very nervous. The driver, meanwhile, is reading an article about the girls who have recently gone missing. And the guy with the camera asks Agnes for her phone number, but she threatens him with the police. As they drive away, Belinda shows up and says they had a girl in the back seat with her mouth taped shut, but Agnes doesn't believe her. We are brought back to the girl from the beginning of the film. It turns out to be Agnes. She examines her wound on her knee and hears Benjamin's voice. Suddenly the camera opens and an unknown man pulls her by the hair. He puts her in a chair and knocks her out with a hard blow. We are brought back to the gas station. Agnes writes a dessert. As immediately Belinda calls her, she can't figure out where the pump came from. The girls remove it and inside Belinda writes to Kenny that it's better not to make fun of her. But he immediately arrives. Belinda tells Kenny that her mother is kicking her out of the house for going out with him, but he has little interest in that. He just calls Agnes pretty and asks Belinda for 1,000 crowns, but she only has 200, which makes him furious and leave the place. Near the motorcycle, he calls her a creature, and when she asks back, he says they'll see each other again. Agnes calls up Benjamin, who tells her that six people ran onto the field naked in the finals, and also offers to give Belinda a ride home after work. But when Agnes comes out of the back room, Belinda is standing by the window. The two who were filming are back and waiting for something on the curb. As they pull up to the gasoline tank, the driver heads inside and has something in his hand. Belinda takes the gun for protection, and we are transported back to another setting. Agnes wakes up under the lenses of the cameras, the number of onlookers quickly gaining. And next to her, she notices a cute Benjamin while there is someone behind her. Agnes asks him to let her go. Her father will pay for everything, but the man with hands as pale as marble only silently gropes her face. He takes out a mask and fastens it to Agnes's face. Episode 3. The guy asks if they've seen his card, to which they say no. But Belinda gets curious about the girl in the back seat last time. He answers that it's a sex doll they wanted to give to their friend today, but he wasn't home, so they fiddle with it all day, and leaves the building. And while they are laughing inside, he smiles lustfully. Agnes returns to the back room to write her dessert. A few moments later Belinda calls her, the pump is standing there again. Agnes goes out to clean it up, 
but Belinda scares her and tells her that there is someone in the car wash. But that's not all. There's smoke from some kind of fire. Back to the cameras, a woman on the speaker announces that the long-awaited show is starting, and there will now be a preliminary test. Body language. Men in costumes and white masks approach Agnes and begin gently stroking her, and when they finish and step back, her mask is removed. A man in clown makeup asks Agnes not to cry, for it is a simple show, and promises not to kill her unless she starts asking for it herself. Agnes asks who he is. He whispers a phrase in her ear, and we realize that he is the strange customer who bought the gas bottle. Episode 4 When they arrive at the car wash, they discover the writing on the wall wishing them to burn. Agnes is about to call the police and her father to gain access to the cameras, but Belinda notices someone standing by the curb filming them. When he starts to approach, Belinda discovers that it's Kenny. He set it all up to make a joke on the girls. He tells Belinda that she didn't give him 1,000 crowns, but the guy says if he takes the prank off on the girls, the debt will be repaid. That's what he was trying to scare them for. But the girls get mad and go inside. Kenny goes the other way too. Agnes is going home. She informs her father of what happened and they close the gas station. Belinda says that if her father sees that Kenny did this, he will fire her. She asks Agnes to help wipe off the paint because she has two hours left on her shift and she agrees. The bell signals a new visitor, but there is no one in the hall as well as cars on the street. Return to the show. Next test, meeting with meat. The clown asks Agnes to give her name to the public, but she is silent then he yells at her and she says her name in fear. And then she answers his other questions. He says that today will be the most tragic and cruel show for the audience from all these cameras and those who sit in the front row. He asks Agnes to say hello to the audience and a new fifth episode begins. Agnes looks at the cameras but there's nobody there. She leaves Benjamin an audio message asking him to pick her up now and strange things start happening in the gas station. Suddenly, someone bangs on the storage room door. Agnes says if it's Belinda's boyfriend again, she'll call the police. The first act of the show begins, the wheel of misfortune. The maniac squeezes Benjamin's arm in a vice to make him wake up, and adds a few strokes to make sure he wakes up. He puts a gag in his mouth and spins the wheel. Orange comes out, and what does orange remind us of? Fire of course. He asks Agnes to tell a scare story while they roast Benjamin. He burns his suit on his elbow and spins the wheel again, where blue falls out, which means it's time to drink the motor fluid. The maniac is of course unhappy with the sectors falling out, so he chooses yellow himself and heads towards Benjamin with a spanner. And while Agnes asks him to stop, he beats him with the wrench. When Benjamin shuts down, the clown says it's time to take off and wraps a chain around him. Then he secures his legs to the floor and starts the chain pulling. His legs start bleeding and then come off. Agnes is hysterical. The maniac opposite impersonates her and then shouts for her to stop. In the storeroom the girls head for the door and Agnes asks Belinda to call the police. When the door opens there is an injured Kenny and he begs her to hide him. And Belinda drops the phone while the officer is talking to her. Agnes calls Benjamin. He is already pulling up to the petrol station. She asks him not to go there, but he goes anyway. It turns out that he is a doctor and is trying to stop Kenny bleeding. He asks Belinda for her mobile, but she is in shock. Agnes is outside getting sick and regurgitating. Benjamin still asks Belinda for her mobile, but Agnes comes back and the lights go out at the petrol station. Belinda thinks it's those guys and they'll kill them all. But Benjamin asks everyone to calm down. Belinda should close the front doors and Agnes should go to the back and close the back taking Belinda's phone at the same time. Agnes goes into the back room and slowly heads for the door. She closes it and picks up Belinda's phone, but she hears a strange grunting in the hall and calls the police as a dark silhouette immediately appears behind her. Again the cameras, the girl introduces the intermission between the second act, and the clown brings Belinda. Agnes tells him it was the guy who bought the gas can at the beginning of the shift, and he killed Benjamin while the audience from the cameras in the front row watch them. Agnes asks Belinda to untie her, but intermission ends and the clown returns. The second act begins, a confrontation between the killers. It is time to make inquiries of the audience. He notices that Agnes is not tied up and asks who did it, ordering Belinda to lie down. He gags Agnes's mouth, which may still have Benjamin's saliva on it. The maniac moves on to Belinda. 
he pierces her cheek with a stapler, then lifts it up and shows the audience her breasts. Immediately, he also begins to pierce her with a stapler, and when he lets her go, he offers the audience in the front row to make their requests and let their imagination have no bounds. And so, the audience demands a kind of bonding of friendship. The conditions for Belinda are that the more often she answers no, the deeper he will sink the knife into her. She should puncture Agnes with a stapler, then she won't get hurt. Belinda punctures her arm, then her nose, then her neck, but he stops her. A great idea has come to him. We should nail the badge right on her nipple. She pierces her nipple with the badge and leaves it where it should be. And the maniac only likes that. Agnes pushes her with her legs. Then the clown gets angry that she interrupts his show and starts punching her in the face. But from behind, Belinda strikes a chair and taking an instrument from the table, tries to free Agnes. A maniac attacks her from behind. He knocks her down and kicks her in the ribs as Agnes tries to free herself and the audience leaves the room. Agnes jumps on him from behind and tries to help, but he throws her on a barrel and then picks her up and tosses her into his instruments. He is very angry at her for ruining the show and starts beating her up, but Belinda stabs her from behind, after which he grabs her and starts strangling her. She grabs a knife lying nearby and cuts his throat, then throws it into the hall where the audience was seated. The last act, the finale. He is dead. The girl steps over his body and follows him down the corridors to the exit. They walk out into the moonlight, but see people running at them with torches and try to hide. They are caught up, but they lock themselves in and try to find a single open door. The door is kicked in by those two visitors from the petrol station and they get a call from the main man who asks them to kill the girls and then destroy the presenter's van. Despite the unforeseen ending, the front row audience is left satisfied. They split up and the girls sit above them the whole time. Belinda finds a window and calls out to Agnes, but a guy appears from behind the curtains who shoots her in the back as Belinda tries to escape. He is attacked by Agnes and she manages to knock him out against the sink. She tries to help Belinda get to the window. Belinda jumps and Agnes follows her. A guy appears from the window and tries to get in, but all pass them. They run to the presenter's van and Agnes gets her inside and gets behind the wheel of the SUV herself. Only there's one problem, the gate is locked. She gets back in the van to Belinda and sees the cameras that have been watching them at the gas station the whole time. Agnes suggests they run away as she still owes her an ice cream, but Belinda asks her to run away alone and bring help. She is hurt anyway and she won't get away. At this point a man with a gun approaches the van and when he gets inside he sees only Belinda sitting there with an open gas canister. He shoots her and Agnes sees the flash of an explosion behind her. She gets to the bridge and sits on the road. A car pulls up behind her whose passengers call Agnes for an ambulance and the police. And while the doctors are helping Agnes, she hears the exact same camera squeak that was all over the show and the same presenters are watching her. Support the channel by subscribing, like and on notifications, because with it you will be the first to know about the video. Thank you for watching.